Good evening, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church Christmas Eve candlelight service. Tonight, we're going to give you an impersonal look at our sanctuary tonight, and also our closing hymn, which is Silent Night. So if you have a candle available when we start Silent Night, we ask you to light that and join with us as we do Silent Night as our closing hymn. May God bless you and have a wonderful evening.
Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson for this evening is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, one of the first prophecies for the coming of Christ. From the ninth chapter, we begin with the second verse. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a, a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nations. Thou hast increased its joy. They rejoice before thee as with joy at the harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, Thou hast broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of this tramping warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second reading, reading is found in the letter of Paul to Titus. Paul writes to his apostle and protege a series of guidelines and regulations for Titus to pass on to the churches. Tucked into these, we find a why to be prepared for Christ to return. From the second chapter of Titus, beginning with the 11th verse. For the grace of God has appeared for the salvation of all men, training us to renounce irreligion and worldly passions and to live sober, upright, and godly lives in this world, awaiting our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from our iniquity and to purify for himself a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. 
And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto all of you this night. From God our Father and our newborn King and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. These are from these words are from St. Paul's letter to Titus, our second reading in this night's liturgy. Grace, God's rich loving kindness freely given. It can't be bought, it can't be earned. It can't be bargained for. This grace has appeared visibly in our world at a specific time and place in human history in a hidden corner of a mighty worldly empire. It has appeared in the birth of a child born in a humble stable in Bethlehem, a feeding box for animals, his cradle. This child would probably never travel more than a hundred miles in any direction from the place of his birth. This child would grow up in another obscure village called Nazareth in Galilee. He would not burst upon the public scene until his 30th year, and his meteoric career of preaching, teaching, and healing would only span three years more or less, and he would meet his death by execution on a Roman cross, a punishment reserved for rebels and common criminals. This is the one whose birth we celebrate, the one of whom the Christian Church has made the stupendous claim that there is something of cosmic significance, something that affects the destiny of every human being and ultimately of the entire universe. In the life and death of this man, whom we also proclaim is alive forevermore, Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, the Son of the living God. In him, the saving grace of God has appeared to set us free from everything that enslaves us 
everything that oppresses us, everything that holds us in fear, everything that makes us something less than what our Creator intended us to be. And for whom has this grace of God appeared? It was for us, but certainly not only for us. The grace of God has appeared for the salvation of all. So the heavenly messengers proclaimed over the fields of Bethlehem, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people a Savior who is Christ the Lord. A message announced first to humble Judean shepherds, rough, illiterate men of the field. Later, too, Gentile wise men, magi kings they have been called, they too will be drawn by the light of the grace that has burst upon the world like a new star. This child will grow up and in the course of his ministry, fishermen, tax collectors, people of the street, lepers, widows, the blind, the deaf and the lame, the wise and the simple, the clean and the unclean, the weak and the powerful, men and women of high position and those of no position, they will all come to him. And so down through the centuries, this message has been carried as the church has proclaimed it, not only through preachers and teachers, but through the humble witness of Christian people, not just in words, but in deeds. This loving kindness of God shown forth in Jesus Christ, when we let it take hold of us, it does something to us. It has a transforming effect on us. And I don't mean an instantaneous effect. It is a process of growth that needs to go on through our entire lives. St. Paul says that God's grace trains us to renounce all that is not of God in our lives. When we were baptized, we, we renounced Satan and every evil power and work. And many of us have renewed that vow in our confirmation and have promised to live as one of God's faithful people, to hear his word and share in his supper to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of our Lord Jesus, and to strive for peace and justice in all the earth. For many of us, those promises in one form or another were made a long time ago. But, but what better time than now to once again say our yes to that commitment. This grace we celebrate at Christmas has power for change in the lives of every one of us. We are all equally recipients and beneficiaries of this undeserved loving kindness of God leading to salvation as we await the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
what we see now only obscurely with the eyes of faith, we will one day see in its full clarity and glory, in the full brightness of its reality shining in the face of Jesus Christ. We will celebrate an eternal Christmas and Easter all rolled into one when our God is no longer hidden from us and we see Christ face to face. My sisters and brothers, may God help us to walk by faith as his redeemed people, his cleansed people, a people filled with zeal and determined and excited to follow this Christ, that the prayer he taught us may be fulfilled in us and by us and through us. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So may it be, and may that peace which came to earth on this holy night that peace which far surpasses all our human reason and understanding, keep all our hearts and minds in the mercy and love of this child of the manger, this man of the cross, this one raised from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, now and unto everlasting ages.
Christian faith by using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. In joy and wonder, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Increase the joy of your people who gather this night to celebrate the arrival of your anointed one. Send us out to announce all that you have done for your people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Raise our voices in the song of all creation, with earth and heavens, seas, fields, and trees. Lead us in proclaiming your salvation and declaring your glory throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bring glad tidings of peace to every nation. Break the rod of the oppressor. Cover the earth in the compassionate authority of your Son, our King. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Give birth to hope in the lives of those who are lost or helpless. Send your spirit of healing and comfort to all who are in need, especially those whose names we lift up to you now with our voices or in our hearts. For all who are ill, for our shining members, for those, uh, also those in the community and beyond, all for whom we regularly pray. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. As you made yourself manifest through Christ, our Savior, make your salvation known also through us, his body. Shape us into a people who are zealous for good and righteous deeds. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. All the saints rejoice in the eternal light of your salvation. Inspire us to rejoice in all things trusting in your promises, fulfilled, until you come among your people again. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Let us pray also for the forgiveness of our sins, first reflecting in silence for a few moments. Thank you. 
Almighty God, in his grace and mercy, has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins, and has entrusted to his church the message and ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also with you. you. We stand, we share the peace among ourselves and those of you who are with us at home. Uh, share the peace with whoever may be there with you. And may this peace truly be with all of us.
made flesh. You remembered your promises to Israel that from the root of Jesse a new shepherd would come. At, at the appointed time, you sent the, the angel Gabriel to Mary, the humble virgin of Nazareth. And by the Spirit's power, your son was conceived in humble surroundings, she gave birth to Emmanuel, God born for us, God with us, God in the midst of us. We praise you for your goodness and laud your magnificent love, a love that would lead this child to become the man for others, the one who takes away all helplessness, doubt, and fear, the one who in love bore the Holy Cross, by that same spirit which brought this new life to birth, empowered his ministry and raised him at his resurrection. Bless now this bread and sanctify this cup of blessing, fulfilling the word of your beloved, well-beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. again. Glory to you, Lord God, heavenly King. In this holy child, all lives are renewed and all sins forgiven by his life and holy passion, his resurrection and exaltation at your right hand. Let your spirit be upon us that as we partake of this holy mystery, we may be filled with your forgiving love and the promise of new life through this holy child. Join our prayers with those of Mary and Joseph and all your saints and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all.
and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are all who put their trust in him.
Let us pray. O God the Father, you, you are, are the fount and source of all goodness. goodness. In loving kindness, you sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. And we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. We will now light our candles. Those of you at home, if you have a candle to light, uh, we encourage you to do so as we sing our uh, sending hymn, Silent Night, Holy Night. Thank you.